So a number of people have contacted me and asked me about how I make my $5 fly tying stations. And, um, you know, it's really hard to say how I make them because they're so simple. Um, you know, I'll show you in a minute, you know, where we take a block of wood, you know, a rough block of wood. I sand it down. This is a six inch piece of pine board. You know, it used to be two bucks. It's like about five bucks now. Uh, but you know, six inches is not much. I'm thinking of using maybe like MDF. It might be a little heavier. Glue a couple sheets together or something. Uh, but essentially it's got one angled hole here and then just a few other ones for tool. Okay, so the steps of making, you know, the $5 tying stations are pretty straightforward. Uh, I just had a two by four and I cut these into six inch pieces. That's pretty good weight. I was thinking maybe MDF might even be heavier, but, but this will work pretty well. Then uh, the next step is, is I take them over here to the sander. Give them a quick, give them a quick sand so the corners are nice and round, because uh, you know they're little kids. So, you know, I want to make sure that they're kind of smooth. I find the best side, and I think I'm going to use this side. And basically, the structure is pretty straightforward. I'm going to be using sort of these exacto knife things, and they come in different thicknesses. So you, so I would tell you the exact size. But basically, first thing you want to do is take the the blade out because that's going to be a thing. And I buy these, uh, I think there are 15 of them for $9, okay? And you can get them in multicolors and stuff. And then just find out, you know, what the thickness is. Okay, pretty straightforward. Uh, then find a, a, find a drill that as close as you can to that. A little smaller is better, but bigger is fine too, because then you can always put tape around the end of this. Then I pretty much, let's see, I'm going to put this one over. See, I want, now what you want is you want this, the hole, you want the hole over kind of near the edge, not too far, about three quarters, just enough so the head will hang over the edge. Okay, you want this at kind of like about a 45 degree angle. And then you want this over the edge. What that does is that gives them a little more height to hang their bobbin and stuff. My first iteration was like this, and I realized that there wasn't enough space. So this is this is kind of the, the way to go. Try to get this as centered as possible. Again, because they're gonna be pulling down, so you want a lot of leverage here. So I'm gonna pick right about the center point. I'm just using this as a guide. Give me a nice sense of where I want that 45 degrees and what 45 degrees is, right about like that, okay? So right about there. Typically I just start straight down. Go in about three quarters of the way. This sets in there, see, nice and tight. That's my, that part. And then I need basically four holes for tools. So I'll put those over here. And remember, safety first. And there you go. That's the basis for your $3 thing. I buy scissors. Scissors I can get on Amazon. They're nose clipper scissors. 
And those are, I think I buy four of those for about $8 or less. So they're around $2 a piece. Uh, and bobbins are four for about, they're about $2 a piece too. So two, four, I use a straw for a knot tire and I just use some guitar wire, some thin wire uh, as a threader, okay? That may cost you a few bucks too if you just wanna buy those. But other than that, that's, that's pretty much your thing. This will hold most any hook and uh, you're all set to go. But pretty simple device. I'm lucky I, I build guitars, so I have some, you know, I have tools here. I have, you know, saws and stuff that can cut it, but I like to just kind of soften them up. See, this got a little bit of a rough edge to it. Just smooth it out so it's nice for the kids. Um, I don't even put shellac or anything on it because, uh, uh, you know, I want the bottom to sort of grip a little bit. So that's pretty much it. That's, that's all there is to this. Um, I mean, you can knock, well, I'm, in fact, I'm, I'm, I'm about to make, I just made, I finished 30 of them, and I'm about to make another 25 or so more. So there you go, and I can leave them with the kids. So for three or four bucks, five bucks, uh, they've got a uh, whole fly tying station, tools and everything. So what it ends up coming out looking like, this is an earlier version, but it, essentially it's, this is, this is the set. Um, you take an X-Acto knife, and I, again, I buy these for $15 for under 10, 15 of these for under $10. You make a hole that fits it. In this case, the hole had gotten a little large, so I put a piece of, I don't know if you can see, there's a piece of, uh, um, scotch tape on there just to just to tighten it up a bit. Uh, the collet holds these flies in extremely well. Um, these I can pick up on eBay um, for for under ten dollars. I think it's like six dollars actually. Uh, the scissors these are called nose hair clipping scissors. That's the secret. Okay, if they say fly fishing, they're $5 a piece. If they're nose hair clipping scissors, you can get them for about two. The most expensive piece on the whole thing. I use, this as my, I use a, a, a straw as my half inch nut tire. And uh, since I make guitars, uh, I have a lot of leftover guitar string, but you can get this at the hardware store. And these are just some beads. I've used uh, just pieces of dowel, you know, and a little little hot glue in there. It's not a big deal. And then on this one, this is the high class version. Uh, I had some magnetic uh, cards and calendars people have given me, and I just flipped them upside down, cut a little piece, so it keeps the keeps the uh, hooks from sliding around. And that's essentially it. Um, this is cut on a 45 degree angle. I make sure that it's cut to a point where this is hanging off. So when they have their their, um, their bobbin, you know, there'll be plenty of space for the bobbin. This can also hang off the edge of the table. And so their bobbin can really hang. Okay, but I tend to want them to hold on to the bobber. So there it is right there. I, I just put a sticker for our Ann Arbor TU on there. Um, just so that the kids know where it's coming from. Um, you know, it's paid for either by my club that bought some, bought some materials for me. Uh, the rest of it I pay for through uh, my lawn trout uh, sort of nonprofit that I have. Uh, if you're interested, lawntrout.com. Uh, it's a great way to support the cause, and I make more of these. So we, we made 30 of them last year. Uh, the kids were able to take them home during COVID uh, and tie flies, and I guess a bunch of them are still tying flies. Uh, the teacher said it was a little hard getting them back, uh, so I'm making them another batch, and these will just stay in the classroom so he'll be able to use them year after year. But at five bucks a pop, uh, that's, a pretty cheap, that's a pretty cheap way to get kids started in doing this. Um, we made some uh, using safety pins, 
And so the kids were able to wear their little flies uh, that they made. So it was kind of cool too. So that's it. And I just wanted to show you what they look like. Super easy to do. I hope, uh, you know, to hear from people and see if they've done it or tried doing it. Uh, it's, it's a super easy project and I think it puts fly tying, you know, really makes it accessible to kids. And they love doing it. They love making bugs. I mean, who wouldn't, who wouldn't like making a bug like that? A little magic marker, a little fun. Fish never see it, but the kids do. So that was, that was one of our bugs we made. All right, 